Hi. Both traditions, Christian and indigenous, are foundational in Australia. Both are very different and to me they seem even contradictory. There is an increasing drive towards more meaningful inclusion of indigenous perspectives in early learning centers and schools and that includes Christian ones. That's great, but it also raises a question. If these traditions, indigenous and Christian, are contradictory, then how do you reconcile them in early learning centers and schools? How do you put them together? Is it a paradox? My working theory is that they are contradictory and that we do have a paradox. But as Hegel said, contradiction is the very moving principle of the world. It's the moving principle. This is dynamic and there is no consensus. In fact, out of more than 40 educators and teachers who got back to me and responded to my inquiry, about one-third agreed, saying, yeah, they're very different, and some of them said they're even mutually exclusive. About one-third, on the contrary, said, no, 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 there are similarities and great synergies. And about one-third said something like, well, this is not binary, you can't just compare them like that, because they are two different things. We will get to what people said, and I've got two interviews ready for you. But first, let me give you a little bit of context, because you might be wondering, who is this guy with his funny accent talking about such sensitive topic? I am Jan, non-indigenous and non-Christian. And before starting Sustainable Butterflies, and it's all on my website, I used to work for a large early childhood group as a sustainability manager. And one of my colleagues was a curriculum mentor with 18 years experience in an Aboriginal center. And this question, what it means to meaningfully include indigenous perspectives, was asked a lot. Now, while it doesn't make me an expert on this specific topic, now I work with a whole range of services, including Christian ones. And this question just didn't go away. So I thought, well, I need to get clear on this, not just for my own sake, but for educators and teachers who might be asking similar questions. So, before I share my theory, I would like to thank all educators and teachers who contributed all your book suggestions, articles, or where to find information. I put it all together and it's all in the video description. So, if everyone is interested, I encourage you to have a look and pick based on your interest. Okay, now let me share with you four points of difference where I see differences, but you might see similarities regarding these both traditions. Because we are not comparing apples with apples here. On the one hand, we have a monotheistic uh, religion brought here 200 plus years ago, but dating back 2000 years with its scriptures written in Bible. On the other hand, we have uh, indigenous spiritual systems dating back up to 60,000 years originated here with its stories passed on orally. Now, I know that there are many indigenous Christians in Australia and you're going to hear from one shortly, but for today I'm just interested in some general themes and guiding principles. And you are welcome to disagree. In the Christian tradition, at that symbolic level, we have Jesus Christ on the crucifix, the center of the cross, at the center, right? Jesus was human, but also revealed and incarnate God, God in the flesh. We have uh, what Hegel said, the unity of universality with individuality fully realized in the Christian incarnation. So there is divine element in human being. On the other hand, in the indigenous tradition at the symbolic level, we have a whole range of symbols and their meaning can vary. There is symbol for people and for animals, for plants, for landscape, for water holes, etc. etc. At least I don't see a people, person being at the center of any, any symbol. Art in the Christian tradition until about 16th century is religious in focus divinity, angels, stories from Bible and depicting the life of Jesus Christ. 
On the other hand, the indigenous tradition, as far as I can tell, art is often inspired by dreamtime stories. A painting, for example, can have multiple meanings. It could be a dreamtime story, it could be a map of the landscape, but it could also be a message for someone uh, all at once, all these three things at once, and the meaning of that message can be hidden, for example, by dots. In the Christian tradition, uh, we have afterlife. Based on my deeds, I will either go to heaven or hell. It will be either salvation or damnation, uh, but taking place somewhere else. In the indigenous tradition, and I'm quoting, and again, the references are in the description, while the spirit is eternal and can return to a body after death or to the dreamtime spirits up in the sky or, or elsewhere, it's not heaven in the Christian sense of heaven, in a sense of good deeds will result in going to heaven and bad deeds will result in going to hell. Land. In the Christian tradition, we have depersonalized attitude to land. It is believed that God gave Christian people dominion over land, resources, plants, animals, etc. Water. And because of this dualism, and I believe that symbolism is involved as well, land, resources, animals, everything, uh, has instrumental value, but not intrinsic value. So it has value only in terms of what it means for me, what can I do with it, but not on its own. And hence the concept of ownership. In the indigenous tradition, there is no attitude to the land because there is no separation, no division. Rather, there is connection with the land. And that connection gives people identity. And let me quote you one more thing here. And uh, that is, land is something to which people belong, it owns them. Landscape is like their second skin. Land is both, has both a physical and spiritual aspect to it. Hence the concept of custodianship as opposed to ownership. Okay, now on the screen you see, uh, and if you want, you know, perhaps take a screenshot and read it later if you want, now, they are just three comments from each category. They are similar, they are different, they are different, different things. Now, I want to share with you one comment, and that's from an ex-pastor who is now current, currently a teacher, right? A teacher. It really, and he responded to my query, you know, are they different, are they similar, how do we reconcile them, right? It really comes down to what you're trying to achieve. If you are going to try to simply, simply syncretize, which means unite or reconcile, the two worldviews, or conversely, appreciate them for what they are different. Merely finding common themes, it's a literary exercise which shouldn't be confused with philosophical convergence. Asking both groups using primary sources is essential. We can all smooth over the differences if we are seeking to do so but that would not engage both groups on their own terms, but rather bring the agenda of the questioner. So I think this is really important. There is one article which is also linked in the video description, which looks at, you know, are they similar or different? And what are the similarities? What are the differences? And it mentions smoke among a few other things, right? And I got excited. Yes, they are similar because there is smoke, right? There is incense in the church. That's smoke, but there is also a smoking ceremony that indigenous people do. And I thought, yes, oh well, I know I have the answers. But then, the more I thought about it, but actually this comment actually tipped the scales for me. I thought, well, I have to think more laterally. Anyway, but now let's go to interviews. And our first interviewee is Mandy. I'm an assistant teacher. Um, and I have to say, College. And I come from Nungua. Nungua. Okay. Nungua and just have East Arnhem Land. East Arnhem Land. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, fantastic. And how long have you been? How long have you been in that in this college, Nungalinya College? How long have you been there? Maybe four four years now. Four years. And uh, I have few questions for you. Uh, so, sorry, do you identify yourself as indigenous Christian? Is that correct? Are you indigenous Christian? Okay, fine. Yeah. Thank you. So the first question I would like to ask Mandy is this. Uh, what Christian traditions do you do? What, uh, what does Christianity mean to you? Like it could be some symbols or something. What sort of traditions do you do as a Christian? Um, we, we go to church. Go to church, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and we, we, we help at fellowship. Fellowship. Fellowship in the yeah in the night. Right. Okay. And we we do Bible study. Bible, Bible study. study. Yeah, right. and help help um, Sunday school. Okay, Sunday school. Okay, cool. Thank you. So these would be the Christian traditions. Now, what about uh, indigenous traditions, Mandy? What indigenous traditions do you do? Like we don't do in the, um, indigenous tradition. Only we just use our language. Right. Like when we talking. Yeah. Okay. And we just using our language. So do you mean like, indigenous language, your traditional language? Yeah. Right. When we at community. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, do you see both traditions, Christian and indigenous, to be different or similar to each other? Do you see them different or similar to each other? Um, it's different because, like, for me, as a Christian, but you got that um, tradition, like you, you went like. I'll give you example. I'll give example. Yeah. Like when the when when people come, can I talk about like when people comes to Nugulinya? Mm -hmm. When people comes to Nugulinya. Yeah. Like different people from other indigenous community. Mm -hmm. Where they come to have, they we got a teaching. I I'm as a Christian, but I'm also an indigenous. I know my people how they relate to each other. Right. Like okay. yeah, like I know them. They doesn't matter if they're from different community. Yeah. But we we, we know the relationship. Right. For the other people, we know okay. if this one related to this one, and this one related to this one. If this one is she's she's like we have it. If we have them in the class, yes. Like, and I'm there. I know like where they can sit. You know, because sometimes you can make people sit together as an indigenous. Okay. Because they got the relationship, you have to know how they related. So, can uh, okay, they, yeah, like yeah, I was gonna say kinship. kinship is really important. Kinship. Because some people can see, okay, see, if they are brother and sister, the brother and sister can see, stay close to each other. They have to be separate. Fair enough. Thank you. Now, can so I, that's how I know my people. Yeah. Because in in the indigenous like like white people doesn't know, but I know me like it yeah. where they can see it, you know. Right. If okay. that's a good example, okay. like boys and cousins, they're not allowed to sit close to each other. Right. Okay. They're Interesting. If if this woman and this man are boys and cousins. 
And for the white people, they don't know, but I know me, I can see because I know the relationship. Po poison, Kassan, did you say? Poison? Yeah, like kinship. Kinship, okay, okay. And like how we relate it. You can see that. I know, yeah, mm -hmm. because we come from, we come from, can I explain kinship? No, like moities, you know, we've got two moities, Duwa and Irija. That's the family thing that we got in our yeah, okay. system. Like, and we, we know how to relate from this one to the another one. Where do you see the main similarities? So do you see uh, some similarities between Christian and indigenous tradition? Mm. Like for Christian, like we are saying, yeah, Papu, we are saying, like Christian, like we, 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 we. So, in this time, so you don't see similarities between Christian and indigenous. Is that correct? You don't see similarities. Okay, no worries. So th thank you very much. What do you think is the best way of balancing them both, the Christian one and the ind indigenous one? Do you have you any? Be respect you gotta be respectful. Respectful, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, you gotta be respectful all the time. If there's something in the community and you are Christian, you can still be part of it, but being there as a person and they look, you are being respectful. Right, okay. Like, mm -hmm. not participating, but just being there, then right. they can see that she still respect. Like, we, we, we can't say I'm Christian and I can't follow, but I'm there as a respect. How does your school see this? Uh, this like how do you bring them together you know the balance them how does the school view that like we we like like for us as we when we we are with the staff mm -hmm. as mob as an indigenous people we explain to to the christians like Aboriginal and Indigenous. What man is saying is there's two way of learning. Two way. Learning from the Indigenous staff members to the white staff members and the other way around. Okay, two way learning. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fantastic. If, say, if you are an educator, Mandy or, uh, or Jenny, you can answer if you want, say, I am an educator in a preschool or school, right? And I want to have more, more inclusion, like bringing more like things from indigenous culture into that Christian school or other non-indigenous school. What do you think would be the best thing to start? Like, would you say, is it the yarning circle or is it putting flags on the wall or is it growing native plants like bush tucker or is it something entirely different what do you think would be the good advice for people who might be asking this question how do you bring these two together best thing would be to have indigenous staff or to bring elders from the local community in to talk to the children and be with the children right calling your college is nearly 50 years old yeah. so We've been going for a very long time and have very good reputation. Yeah. If you go to our website, there's a video there where Mandy is speaking. Oh, really? So if you look up that video and listen to it, you'll understand much more what Mandy was talking about. Okay? okay. Yeah. And there's videos not just, not just from Mandy. There's another one there by a man called James Wood. And that would be a good one too, because he talks a little bit about balancing. Uh, now we have Anna here, Anna West from a, a, an early learning centre down in Wollongong. Yeah. And uh, so 
Anna, uh, is it correct that you are a Christian, non-indigenous, I mean, non-aboriginal indigenous educator? Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. I'm, I come from um, Egypt where the, the, I'm a Copt and the indigenous peoples are the First Nations people over in Egypt, as well as the Nubians um, up in Upper Egypt. Um, but yeah, and I'm a Christian as well. Um, but yeah, I'm excited today for this interview. Yeah. What symbolizes Christian tradition to you? What comes to your mind? And subsequent question is, what Christian traditions do you do? So um, well, when I think about Christianity, um, like I think about, you know, they have people go to church and they meet together and talk about the word, uh, the Bible, um, and our connection to Jesus um, and God. And uh, we sometimes do prayer groups or um, worship nights where it's just, when I say worship nights, a lot of people would um, interpret, interpret that differently. Um, but when I say worship nights, I picture um like like a band singing up like on a stage or something and and singing like songs about god or, or jesus they're not so like religious as you see in the movies or whatever but, but just like modern songs or or other songs that are about god um and then people you know standing up and singing and raising their hands that type of worshipping is what I picture. Um, but yeah, and other traditions I would say um, is definitely uh, giving to the church with money um, to support the church um, and uh, missionary stuff um, where when I say missionary, people going out um, as, as a group um, or by themselves off to different countries or or in their own place where they live and telling people about God and about the Bible and what it says um, and its truth. I also think of like community as well when I think of uh, Christianity they're very big on that um, also like um, mentoring their own community within the church and what symbolizes indigenous traditions to you what comes to your mind and i mean now more like in australia i understand you indigenous copt uh, yeah. egyptian christian i mean yeah. what comes to mind when it when i say indigenous like aboriginal what does symbolize it what does it mean to you well when i think of that i think you know i do i actually do go to a indigenous um first nations the the original people here um who run a church that i go to um and so it's been really good to get you know their perspective and knowledge and about christianity as well as their way of life and just interacting with them has been really good um and yeah, yeah anyway um what i see for first nations people here for their traditions i would say is very much community based too i think in not only to the first nations people here i think in a lot of indigenous cultures it's very communal and it's very together with everything you do and for some people that's very you know culturally different to the main society now in Australia, you know, with European cultures and white cultures. Um, but yeah, it's very communal and um, they've got a very strong connection with their country and their land. Um, and, you know, they, they describe the land as living, like it's living, it's not just, you know, land and plants and earth and stuff it's like a living it's like talking to you it's speaking to you mm -hmm. as well as like the animals and you know the the water and and the trees and it's, it's all together as one as an a christian educator do you see both tradition christian and indigenous i mean aboriginal 
uh, to be different or similar to each mm. other? Well, I think it's very much about context or, or cultural. It's very much about cultural living and lifestyle. And um, when I think about Christianity, Christianity, if you think about it, Christianity is very much a very wide thing because there can be some Christian churches who have a very different lifestyle to what you may say to Indigenous Christian um, churches or, you know, because um, I've, I've, I've participated in a very European European based white church and their way of running church and um, living a life as a Christian. Uh, and I've also participated in and currently um, in an Indigenous run church by First Nations people here. Um, and it's it's completely different in the way it's run and the way we relate to the Bible and relate to God. It's completely different. I would say very much in white based churches, it's um, very focused on sin and, you know, becoming perfect or being perfect with God. Um, but in Indigenous churches, it's very much based on um, where we're living with God now and where, you know, living communal and how do we get back to when before, you know, um, Adam and Eve were in the, the big, beautiful garden that God made for them and, and you know, um, living together in harmony and, mm -hmm. and in reality and, and building each other on um, and not very much sin-based with other stuff. Um, okay. But, yeah, so the similarities... Um, it's hard to, you know, uh, put together, but I do think there are some similarities with, I think the big thing is, is that with the white based churches, they do talk a lot about community, but their definition of community is very different to what an indigenous based church definition of community mm -hmm. is. So, so oh, what? Awesome. Oh, awesome. So that's a nice segue to my next question. So one question is, where do you see the main differences and where do you see the main similarities? So if you would like to just highlight some main differences and similarities, and we're talking Christian and indigenous traditions in your own words. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think the main differences is as I said, with community and definitions of community and also yep. differences of lifestyle and how to how like relating to the Bible or relating to God in a relationship. Yep. Um, I think with white white based churches, it's very, you know, sometimes it, it can be guilt based or, you know, where, you know, I, I find in some white based churches it's very pushed that you know you read your bible every day and, and you you pray every day and you you go to church and and do do all of these things and you know if you don't do it you know you're not being a good enough christian or okay even though that's not directly said it's very much induced um okay and but with um Indigenous churches, it's more about like, you know, if you read your Bible, God's celebrating it, and, you know, really loves you spending time with them or, or when you don't spend time with them, maybe if you're busy or, you know, choosing not to read the Bible every day, like he's, he's not angry at you and saying, you know, you shouldn't be doing that or, or mm -hmm. calling you a bad Christian or, you so know. Where do you see the main differences between Christian and indigenous, like Aboriginal traditions, if you see any? I think Christianity, well, I, maybe not, I wouldn't use the term Christianity, but having a relationship with God, which is what I define as Christianity, um, has always been a thing in indigenous cultures and especially in First Nations cultures here um 
And but I don't think that the white church has identified that. And then they, you know, a lot of the time they use missionary stuff to go and outreach to people, you know, who don't know about God, but really God's already there, you know, and already built a relationship mm -hmm. through through their culture and other stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of a lot of indigenous cultures you know, already know the creator um, and just have a different way of uh, walking through life with him. Um, and that's significant, significantly different. I find that with Christianity in a white context um, and Christianity in a First Nations context to people here, um, I would say that the white based church has kind of openly said that certain things like, you know, when, when indigenous people here talk about how the land is living or um, like mother nature being alive or um, talking about our ancestors, um, about their ancestors and I think that's very in conflict with what is what's being you know presented or shown in a white based church a white based church you don't they don't very much refer to you know um getting knowledge from your ancestors or or, you know, living with your ancestors every day. Um, yeah, I find that it's very in conflict because I feel like in a white-based church, that's kind of been told not to do because it's, you know, with bad spirits. But okay. in an Indigenous church, um, calling upon your ancestors and being with God, that's like a normal thing to do, like mm -hmm. you're you know you're living with your ancestors every day um and um speaking to the to the land and mother nature every day and connecting to it mm -hmm. um but yep. yeah in the other churches i would say they kind of avoid that stuff because i think they believe it's like it can it's got bad spirits around what is the best way of reconciling or balancing both traditions, indigenous, I mean Aboriginal, and Christian? I think um, very much having the understanding of how um, cultural con context comes into play with, with Christianity um, and, and the differences between those two ways of living, indigenous way of living or you know, a, way, a white way of living is very key to have an understanding around that in terms of reconciling the two. Um, because when, when you build that understanding and knowledge of, you know, um, the differences or similar differences between the two, then you can know your, your place and know, um, you can know how to then go on to building a relationship or or respect respectful um service to indigenous people um so yeah pretty much knowing and understanding the cultural context and you know the different um, histories of Christianity. Now, what is the view then of the of the center that you're working, Anna? And, and I do I understand correctly your early learning center where you work? It's not Christian, right? It's uh, secular. No, it's not Christian. So, so in that case, what is the way of including these indigenous perspectives into the curriculum or the daily life of the center? What, what do they do, and how do they see this? They try, they try their best to acknowledge and um, be respectful to Aboriginal culture um, and in inputting that perspective, 
those perspectives and culture in their program. So we have Yarning Circle, we have NADOC Week, um, we have a wrap, um, the Reconciliation Action Plan. Um, so we're just starting to build that up with, you know, trying to input that into our new um, systems and, and programs that we're building. Um, my boss, she's asked me, like, and all the workers, if they know any connections to local original elders or or local um, original people who would love to come and do things in their preschool um, or program um, to just let her know, which I, I do um, know with my mum, some local original elders. Um, and so, yeah, we've been in contact with them and trying to build a relationship awesome. with them. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate your time. Uh, I'm curious uh, because this video, I'm not proving anything. I'm not trying to prove anything. I am rather thinking this through. It's really complex on its own terms, let alone thinking about how can you bring these both traditions together, right? So if you have any comments or references or opinions, please share them, right? So that we all learn this is about improving and you know share them in the comments or let me know or email me whatever i am jan from sustainable butterflies and uh yeah you have a great day see you later